how to adjust the valves on a 1994 1.8 liter Acura engine. These are the tools I used to do my valve lash adjustment. Now they're not the tools that I used in order to remove the valve cover. That you can see on my video on how to change a valve cover gasket and cam plug. Now starting at the top, I'm going to be using a half inch ratchet to turn the crankshaft over. The flat blade screwdriver will be used to adjust the valve lash along with the 12 millimeter combination wrench. The long extension is a specialty extension that you don't necessarily need. This extension has a 3 8 drive on the left and a half inch drive on the right. This allows me to use my half inch ratchet with a 3 8 socket. Just below that, in case you don't have the specialty extension, you can use a standard half inch extension and an adapter from half inch to 3 8 Below that, I have a short 3 inch 3 8 extension with a specialty locking adapter on the end. There's a swivel socket that fits on the 3 8 extension as well as a 19 millimeter socket. I prefer a 6 point socket so it doesn't slip. To the right is a flat feeler gauge set with a 4 and 5 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. On the bottom is an angled feeler gauge set and that feeler gauge set has a 7 and 8 thousandths feeler gauge. Typically I would use the angled feeler gauges, however the angled feeler gauges didn't go small enough to the 4 and 5 thousandths that I needed. So in this case I needed to use two separate feeler gauge sets. Additionally. I'll need a 3 8 ratchet, a 3 8 extension to take the spark plugs out, and a 5 8 spark plug socket. Now this is a 5 8 swivel spark plug socket, but you don't need the swivel, you can use a straight one. Just make sure it's designed to take out spark plugs because there's a rubber insert inside the socket to make sure you don't break the spark plug. Let's take a moment to talk about the specialty adapter that I have on the end of my extension and why I want to use it. So this is a special adapter that I purchased to go on to my extension which is this one right here. And the advantage to this adapter is that it's a quick coupler that locks the socket onto the adapter so it can't be removed just by pulling on it. And this is going to aid us when we remove our extension from that fender well cover. So I'm going to take this off and show you how this goes on. So you can buy these separately like I did. And it's just going to go on to my extension. I'm going to put the little dimple. So there's the ball. This dimple is going to go on the side for this Allen. And then we're just going to simply tighten up this Allen. Now you can buy extensions that have these already on them as part of the extension but I didn't want to buy a whole new extension so I decided to just buy this adapter because it works perfectly well. Now I can put this on here, lock that socket on so it won't come off when I pull on it and then when I do need it off I just pull the collar back and then the socket comes right off. I'm also going to be using a little 3 8 swivel for this process and we're going to go ahead and that's just going to end up being right on the end. That'll give me some angular operation of my extension bar. I like to use this type of adapter because the access hole in the fender well is a split plastic hole which means as I stick the extension through the hole to lock onto the crankshaft the socket grabs the crankshaft just fine. However, when I go to remove the socket and extension from that access hole, the access hole split plastic will pull the socket off and it'll fall in the undercarriage of the car and make it difficult to retrieve. I'm going to adjust the valves on my 1.8 liter Acura engine. Now, a couple of things we got to do. The first thing is this really needs to be cold. So when you touch it by hand, it shouldn't be warm at all should be completely ambient temperature or cold. So no heat whatsoever. Then we're going to remove the spark plugs. We're going to find a way, there is a way that you can go in through the left wheel well to turn the engine over with a ratchet wrench without actually having to take the wheel off. It's a little tricky, but it can be done without taking the wheel off. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And then we're going to go through the firing order. So cylinder number one is the first one. 
And the firing order for this car is 1, 3, 4, 2. So we'll do 1, 3, 4, 2. This car has two valves for the exhaust and two valves for the intake, so we're going to have to do each one of these. Now these valves were just done not too long ago, but I figured since I had the valve cover off, then I'd go ahead and show you how to do this. Now if you want to see how to remove the valve cover and put it back on, you can watch my video on how to do a valve cover gasket and cam plug seal. So we need to take the spark plugs out. Now it's going to be the, one of the first things that we're going to do. If your engine is hot and you need to cool it down quickly, get the valve cover off, take the spark plugs out, take a big 20 inch box fan, lay it right on top of the engine and turn it on high so it blows cold air down on the engine. That'll help cool the engine down. And again, it has to be cold to the touch right here. So let's go ahead and take these spark plugs out. And you want to make sure you're using a spark plug socket because a spark plug socket has a little rubber grommet in it that can grab a hold of the spark plug here and keep it from breaking this insulation. Plus it helps hold it in there so when you pull it out, you don't have to go fishing down inside this hole to get that spark plug out. If you haven't replaced your spark plugs in a long time, this might be a good opportunity to replace your spark plugs. These were just done recently, so I'm going to be putting these back in. Most of these cars will have a sticker on the hood, and that sticker will give us the information that we're looking for. Especially, it's going to give us that intake and exhaust valve clearance that we're looking for. So here's that underhood sticker. We've got spark plug information. This is what we're looking for is my valve lash. IN stands for intake, EX stands for exhaust. So here we're looking at an intake valve and it's making sure to tell us it's cold. And we're looking for a one tenth of a millimeter, 0.1 plus or minus 0.02 millimeters. And we'll convert that to inches since I have inch gauges. My exhaust is 0.18 millimeters plus or minus 0.02 millimeters. Turn the wheel all the way to the left to give you access in through the fender well. Down through the fender well is this area right in here. We're going to put a socket on an extension through there and that will go right into the crank so we can turn the crank. After inserting the 3 inch extension and 19 millimeter socket through the access hole in the fender cover and connecting the 3 8 swivel, verify that the socket is engaged with the crankshaft bolt. Attach the long extension bar and ratchet so you can rotate the engine to the proper position for adjusting each valve. I want to start off with this number one cylinder at top dead center and I'm going to find that by using a long screwdriver. You can use a piece of dowel rod, a small piece of dowel rod, but I'm going to find that top of that cylinder right there and then I'm going to use the ratchet that I placed over on the crank and I'm going to turn that counterclockwise and we're going to watch the piston go up and down. We're going to want this to be at top dead center and then we're going to want to make sure all these valves are loose. That's how we know it's at top dead center for firing number one. So here we go. You can see right there, it stopped. If I continue, it starts to go down. So I'm gonna crank it back just a little bit. So we're right there at that top dead center mode. And then I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna check each one of these valves to see if they're loose feeling. If any of them are tight, then that means I'm on the exhaust stroke. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. So you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna wiggle this and wiggle this one. I can probably get the screwdriver in there and show you how that wiggles up and down. This one as well and this one as well. 
So if they're all wiggling, we are at top dead center, and we're going to be top dead center for the compression stroke. So now I can adjust these valves. Then I will place it in the next one in the firing order, which is going to be cylinder number three, which is this one over here. And so what we're going to see is that these valves don't wiggle up and down. They're tight. Right there, that one's tight. And so we're not going to be able to adjust those. We're going to have to turn that till that's at top dead center for that cylinder to adjust these valves. So let's come over and show you how to adjust these valves. So I'm going to use these Fila gauges. This is a four thousandths of an inch. I've got four thousandths and five thousandths because four thousandths is close to 0.1. Five thousandths is a little bit too big. We're going to use a go, no go. And then for the exhaust, we're going to be using a seven thousandths. Okay, so we'll use that seven thousandths as a measurement. And that is a 0.178 millimeters. And then we're going to use an eight thousandths as the go, no go. We need a 12 millimeter box end wrench and we need a flat blade screwdriver to do this. So we're going to take this four thousandths and we're going to check this intake valve right here. So let me go ahead and zoom into that. So I need to get that between this cam lobe and this adjuster follower. And I'm going to try to put that four thousandths in there and it's just not going in there. Now on the other one, we can see it actually slides in there nicely. And so you can see how far down I can get that. So that's going in there. So once the 4,000 goes in, go ahead and try to put the five. And if the five doesn't go in, then we're good. This is what we call go, no go. If 4,000 goes, but the five won't. So this one's a little bit too tight. So we need to adjust that one. And so what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to put the combination wrench right there on the nut. We're going to put our screwdriver right here. Try not to twist the adjuster while loosening this. So I'm actually going to be twisting the screwdriver in the tighten or clockwise gently as I loosen this one. And they had that really tight. So now I'm going to just loosen this just a smidgen and then I'm going to tighten that back up. And now I'm going to check to see whether or not my 4000s goes in there. Never put the feeler gauge in there and use the adjuster to tighten it. So you, now you can see that slides in there. Did I move it too much? Let's try the five. And see the five just won't go in there. So that one is properly adjusted. Let's go ahead and check the exhaust. So this is my seven thousandths and I'm using a bent feeler gauge on this one. It makes it sometimes easier. So the seven thousandths goes in. Does my eight thousandths go in? Eight thousandths does not go in. So therefore that one is set properly and seven thousandths is going in. Eight thousandths not. So these were adjusted correctly. This one was correct. This one was a tad bit too tight. So now we need to move on to the next cylinder. So we want to come over to cylinder number three. Go ahead and put our screwdriver down in through the spark plug hole. And let's go ahead and crank this over until we get that up to top dead center. And we're going to turn this counterclockwise. And you can see it start to go down. So I'm going to go clockwise just a tad. So I make sure I'm right at that top dead center mark. And then we can come over and make sure that those valves are loose. So that's properly set. Now let's go ahead and here's my seven thousandths. Let's check this exhaust. That one works. That one works. Let's try the eight. Eight doesn't go in. Eight doesn't go in, so that one is good. Let's go ahead and try that intake. Here's my four thousandths. Let's see if this goes in here. It does. Let's try the other side. It does. Let's try the five thousandths. That does not go in there. And let's try the five thousandths over here. 
So that one's been adjusted correctly. So the firing order is one, three, four, two. So one, three, four. Four is gonna be my next one in my firing order. Let's go ahead and get that screwdriver down in there like that. And let's crank this over till that one hits stop dead center. And right there, it's going down a little bit, so let's back it up. So right there is where we want it. These valves should be loose. Which they are. And let's come on over and check our measurements. So here's a four. It goes in nicely. Four over here goes in nicely. How about the five? Does not go in and does not go in. So those are adjusted correctly. And let's try the exhaust. Here's the seven. Nice. And then here's the eight. And there you go. So one, three, four, let's go ahead and do the last one. We'll come back over. One, three, four, two is the last one right here. Let's find the head of that piston and let's bring it up to top dead center. Okay, we're at top dead center. Once again, check the valves. The valves are loose. And let's go in and check the feeler gauges. So four thousands here, four thousands here, five thousands doesn't go in, five thousands doesn't go in. So once again, that's correct. Seven thousands goes in nicely, eight thousands doesn't go in at all. So the feel of gauge is just going in there just like that. And then if I try to put the five, it just won't go in there. Now I'd like to give you at least one close up of how to make that adjustment. So there it is right there. Even though this does not need to be adjusted, Loosen and then slowly turn this a little bit, then tighten. Then you would recheck. Since this one didn't need adjusting, I have to put it back. So I'm going to loosen the wrench. Try to set that back to where it was at. Tighten it, take it off. So there's the five, doesn't go in. There's the four, goes in nicely. So make sure to reinstall and torque the spark plugs back down. Get them started by hand first. Do not put them in with a wrench or power tool. This is where having the locking collar on your extension is really nice. That way your socket doesn't pull off. Twenty-five foot-pounds of torque on the spark plugs. Let's do that now. This is all set. I will now clean my surfaces up right here with some denatured alcohol. I'd go ahead and put my new gasket on and put the cover on. If you want to see how to do that, go to my valve cover gasket replacement and cam plug replacement video and you can see how to finish this job by putting the valve cover on.